Welcome into the first edition of NFL Crossover Thursday for the 2022 NFL season. I am the host of Locked on Cardinals, Alex Clancy. He is Chris Clark, one of two hosts of Locked on Chiefs. And we are here to break down the week one matchup of the Kansas City Chiefs traveling to State Farm Stadium to play the Arizona Cardinals. Very different off seasons for both of these teams. Different trajectories, maybe question marks in different spots on the roster. First of all, Chris, this is your and my first crossover together, man. Welcome. Yeah. Um, tell me what it's like to like to cover the Chiefs really quick before we get into it. Really quick, it's it's a lot of fun. I mean, this team has been a lot of fun for years under Andy Reid. And when Patrick Mahomes came in, I was ecstatic. I thought that was the best pick they could possibly make, even though they had Alex Smith, who was a Pro Bowler at the time. And it's just been a fun ride ever since. So, uh, you know, going for the seventh straight division title. It's wild. I mean, and, and and welcome to the NFC West of the AFC now, where in perpetuity, it's going to be the toughest division in football, at least of the AFC. Uh, the Cardinals here have kind of faced that over the last chunk full of season. They've been towards the bottom. They've been at the top and everywhere in the middle. So let's, let's look at this really quickly. Big storylines going into this game and what it would mean one way or another for the Chiefs when they travel a couple thousand miles, I think, to State Farm Stadium to play the Cardinals. Afternoon slate, week one, new offense, and lost a couple starters on defense. Yeah, to me, the biggest story of this game for Kansas City and going into it and what is going to make the biggest impact in this game for me is the Chiefs' health. If you look at the injury report from Wednesday, they are healthy. They had everybody that was a full participant. The guys that were injured that went out the last preseason game with either concussions or other minor injuries, they are healthy. And going into this game, you could have been down a guy like Juju Smith-Schuster, a guy like Mar Marquez Valdez-Scantling, and another guy in Trent McDuffie. All three starters and all three at huge positions of need for Kansas City to be successful in Arizona. And, and really, it's successful in any game. Don't forget... They lost Tyreek Hill in the offseason. They traded him away. So Marquez Valdez-Scantling and Juju Smith-Schuster are your guys that are going to be taking over that position and trying to replicate what Hill was able to do. Uh, and obviously, from a skill standpoint, they're not Tyreek Hill. But if they can get somewhat of the production and between the two of them do a lot of the things that he did, I think Kansas City will be in great shape. He's Chris Clark, locked on NFL or locked on Chiefs. Yeah, you know, and my biggest, my biggest story – for the Cardinals and how it impacts the team is how the defense stops those players, stops Patrick Mahomes. I said on Locked on Cardinals all week this week, disrupting Patrick Mahomes is different than getting to his kitchen because Patrick Mahomes has the ability to be, you know, rubber arm man with the, with the angles that he throws the ball. He has the ability to, um, you know, extend plays. And once he gets in the open field, he's a lot faster than people think. I mean, it's, it goes all the way back to the Tennessee Titans playoff game where right before the, right before halftime, that was the emergence. That was the that was when Patrick Mahomes arrived in the NFL, and we've seen right. that ever since. So you have Byron Murphy and Marco Wilson in the corners. You have Buda Baker and Jalen Thompson. Two guys, the latter of the two, are probably the most undervalued safety tandem in the NFL. Buda Baker got paid. Jalen Thompson just did. It's the wide receivers. It's Travis Kelsey. It's Patrick Mahomes, and it's the defense. You could say, yeah, this is going to be a shootout, over 50-point, over-under projection, but this is how the defense of the Arizona Cardinals will stack up for the rest of the season, and the first just, you know, litmus test will be against one of the best offenses the NFL has seen in the last decade, if not 20 years. Uh, you know, today's episode of Locked On NFL Thursday Crossover is presented by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. Pick two to five players, and if they score more or less than the prize pick projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on your entry. First-time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to 100 bucks with promo code locked on. That's prizepicks.com, promo code locked on. Now, Chris, let me ask you, locked on Chiefs. The running back room is something that Andy Reid has used. Doesn't matter who the jersey is. Doesn't matter who's wearing the jersey. Darrell Williams, perfect example, now an Arizona Cardinal. It's truly been the sexiest and most fun version of next man up. Now, sure, with Kareem, when Kareem Hunt was there, he's gone. Damien Williams, immediately, immediate impact when he came over from Miami. And then Clyde edwards alaire shot out of the gate strong after being drafted at LSU. It's kind of retracted, but you've got Derek Gore, Jarek McKinnon. It doesn't matter. And then uh, signing Ron, uh, uh, Ronald Jones. What does this running back room look like? Is, is there a hierarchy? 
or is it just whoever Andy decides to throw in there and who has the hottest feet at the time? No, I think he, there's a hierarchy. I think CEH, I think Clyde is the starter for right now. Uh, Ronald Jones may be number, number two, but really it looks like the number two guy is going to be Isaiah Pacheco, who was a seventh-round yeah. pick that they've been really impressed with this this offseason. And I think he has eclipsed Ronald Jones. There's a lot of questions going into that final preseason game if Ronald Jones was even going to be on the roster. So uh, I, I think that that's really the – level that it is right now and then you got uh, McKinnon you got Jerick McKinnon as well who can do some different type of things that are going to bring a different aspect to this team from the running back position and then Ronald Jones who you really know what he's capable of he's a downhill runner he's going to hit you hard and he's going to run hard and that's what he's going to give you he's not much of a pass catcher but it looks like he's worked on his hands in the offseason so I think they, it's, they have a formidable punch there but it's Andy Reid they don't use the running game that much I mean Andy Reid looks at those short swing passes as, as runs. He doesn't look at right. a normal running game. So uh, I'm not sure how much impact of that those players are really going to have unless somebody just breaks out and they're able to just run the ball down people's throats, which with this offensive line, I think they should be able to do at times. Yeah, you know, um, the reason why I asked that question during this high-impact situation segment here on Locked On uh, NFL Crossover Thursday, Locked On Chiefs, Locked On Cardinals, Week 1, Chris Clark, Alex Clancy, um, one of my biggest sticking points for the Cardinals going into week one was not giving up the big play. And MVS is nightmare fuel. Juju Smith-Schuster has is tied for the longest play in NFL history at 99 yards. Travis Kelsey is a terror. And the reason why I, I bring up the running backs is you're right. I mean, it's pass, it's run, it's whatever it is. However, he, and he chooses to utilize running backs at any given time. The screen pass, when the Cardinals are trying to blitz, could be a huge chunk gain at any given time with an Andy Reid offense because you know a couple yep. things about Andy Reid. He's going to use the tight end, they're going to throw the ball deep, and they're going to screen pass the hell out of you when they find the opportunity. And but I don't know which I don't know which is scarier, a large chunk play from a running back from or a wide receiver bubble screen utilized perfectly, uh, perfectly, or MVS on a you know seventy five yard bomb down the sideline. And I will say this, the other thing is, is Kansas City got out of their screen game for the past couple of seasons. I mean, they haven't used it near as much as they have in Andy Reid's past. I think part of that's Patrick Mahomes and part of the weapons that they have in Kansas City. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if it comes back. And I will say this, I know we're talking about the Cardinals game, but you can't tell me that Andy Reid is not going to dial up some plays specifically to put on tape for the Chargers who come to town on mm -hmm. Thursday night. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I agree with that. And this is, this is the real preseason game week one. You never really know what's going to happen. It, it's it's tough. It's tough to bet on. It doesn't mean a whole lot for the extent of the season at times, and it's just going to be fun because there should be a whole lot of points scored uh, in Week One at State Farm Stadium when Kansas City rolls into town. Coming up next, the key matchups that can win the game for your respective team for the Cardinals and the Chiefs. Chris Clark and I will talk about both of those next here on the first edition of Crossover Thursday here in the 2022 season as we're what 72 hours away 96 my math's terrible um that's next locked on nfl first this is a newer sponsor of ours turo t-u-r-o they're the world's largest car sharing marketplace so think of you needing a car for vacation or your you know your your car is 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 in the shop and you want to book any car that you want, wherever you want, around where you live. There's a community of local hosts, okay? You're a guest when you shop with Turo. Browse a huge selection of vehicles for just about any location or any occasion in any location and budget. There's a spectrum there also. Book an SUV or minivan for a family road trip, a pickup truck for some errands, or even test drive an electric vehicle. Every trip is backed by liability insurance. Terms, conditions, and exclusions apply Ditch boring rental cars and find your drive at Turo.com. Week one crossover Thursday. Alex Clancy locked on Cardinals. Follow me on Twitter at Clancy's Corner. He is Chris Clark. Follow him on Twitter at Chris Clark NFL Monday through Friday. Locked on Chiefs with Ryan Tracy. This is one of the sexier matchups. Not necessarily from storyline perspective, even though Cliff Kingsbury is facing his college quarterback and Patrick Mahomes. But talking about impact matchups going into this game, there's a handful from both sides. Chris, what are some impact matchups that you're looking towards as needs to win 
to get a victory for week one for the Chiefs? I'm going to take a little bit of a cop out and say there's two, there's two specific players and it's MVS and it's Juju and maybe even a little bit of Sky Moore and Michael Hardman. And I say that because going against the Arizona Cardinal corners, you're actually going to see what this offense is going to be this year because they're not going to show a lot in the preseason. You're going to start seeing what they're going to be able to do with all four of those guys against a secondary that they're actually trying to beat at this point. Because as you said earlier, preseason games really don't matter. I mean, they're not going to show you their new plays, and we're going to see some new plays in this game. I said it earlier, they're going to put some stuff on tape just for the Chargers. The reality is, is they're getting ready for that game too. So to me, looking at the wide receivers versus the corners, what is Kansas City able to do? Because if you look back at where they struggled in 2021, it was a matter of struggling with getting open other guys other than Tyree Kill or Travis Kelsey. And when you have that problem, it creates problems with your offense. You're not able to move the balls consistently. You're not going to score as many points. This year, I think they have four guys that can legitimately move the ball at different times and in different ways, and I think that's going to be something exciting to watch. Do you think that Juju smith is just going to roll in and be ready? Like, do you think that that's going to be a sexy, you know, fantasy football ablaze that Juju should be taken in, you know, the fifth round instead of the seventh round or something? Like, do you think he's just going to come in and be wide receiver one, or do you think Sky Moore could take that early on, or is MVS going to be much more than a one-trick pony like he was in, in Green Bay? I think he's going to be more than one trick pony, but I guess what I would caveat it with is that I think Travis Kelsey is wide receiver one. Yeah, fair and, enough. Um, Juju is always going to be second fiddle to him and maybe even second fiddle to MVS. I mean, the reality is, is that Juju works better as the second best option. And if you look back at how he had his best season, it was behind Antonio Brown. In this situation, Kansas City's best receiving option is Travis Kelsey. And I don't think that's going to change. So I, I expect Juju to have a big impact on this offense uh especially considering he's in the contract year and he's got a lot of incentives to play for yeah no i agree and i, I mean f- from the cardinals perspective it's it's the matchup against travis kelsey who are they going to put up against him i mean is it going to be zavin collins in coverage is it going to be more buda baker spying him buda baker is known for being able he, he was shutting down george kittle before people knew what his name was even though he's much smaller in stature i don't think it's so much of the ceiling of how they can stop Travis Kelsey. It's more the floor. It's more the ability for them to kind of hinder him from putting up 10 receptions, 120 yards and two touchdowns. I mean, it, it's yeah, kind it's of, a limit it, thing. It's, yeah, it, it's limiting. It's monitoring his output. And, and I think another one is, you know, with, with Teron Matthew gone, and I know that he didn't play a traditional safety position, but with Teron Matthew gone and this wide receive slash tight end core that the Cardinals have, I want to see the corners, Trent McDuffie rookie. I want to see the corners, stack up against Marquise Brown, A.J. Green, Rondell Moore, you know, and, and Tr- Zach Ertz, Trey McBride, the rookie. Like, the Cardinals have options. And executing those options is is something that that leaves something to be desired at times. But I'm curious to see what the Cardinals will do to stack up on uh, against the Cardinals wide receivers. And another one is what kind of defense are, is going to be played against Kyler Murray? Like, I, and this is going to be something that's going to be a wrinkle in perpetuity until Kyler Murray, you know, hangs up his cleats. Like, is Kyler Murray going to show that step forward that Josh Allen took in year three where it's like, this guy is a bona fide superstar in this league. Is he going to take that jump? We've seen it in flashes. We haven't seen it like Patrick Mahomes did his first first full year starting, which, as I say, ruined the curve for everybody else. Not everybody's Patrick Mahomes. And 12 other teams didn't see that as, as Patrick or whenever he was drafted in the, in the, in the low teens or high teens, whatever it is like Patrick Mahomes ruined it. Kyler Murray is growing in a natural way, in a natural, you know, in an organic way. And hopefully this is the year where he takes that true bona fide step to star elite quarterback. But I'm curious to see what the defense is going to look like with Kyler Murray. If they're going to bracket him, make him a passer, or if they're going to let him run the ball a little bit, and then kind of blanket the receivers. And you stole my next matchup that I want to talk about, which was Kyler Murray versus the Chiefs DNs, because that is, to me, a huge key. Kansas City has to be able to keep him in the pocket and not let him get outside. If he gets outside, it's going to be a more difficult game for Kansas City. I think it's, that's one thing that they have to watch for and they have to make sure of is that he does not get outside. Keep him in the pocket. Crash the pocket with your DTs. Uh, Chris Jones is going to be a huge presence on that offensive line, but he's going up against one of the best in Rodney Hudson. Uh, so that's one of that's going to be a fun matchup to watch. But really, you you nailed it in my mind. 
DNs versus Kyler Murray was the next thing that I was going to be curious about because if they can contain Kyler Murray, and I'm not saying stop him from running, just contain him, keep him to three or four carries for you know, 20, 30 yards, you're in a great position to be able to win that game because then you make the Cardinals' offense a little bit more one-dimensional in an aspect. And I think Kansas City's defense is going to be better than teams think they will be this year. Yeah, and of course Patrick Mahomes was drafted at 10. That's, excuse me. I was thinking about my next point before remembering when Patrick Mahomes was drafted. I apologize for that before I get ripped up. I and Listen, the thing is, Chris, we don't know what this offense is going to look like this year. Like, I would love right. for this offense to become one-dimensional. I would love it. You give the running back, you give the ball to the running back to run the ball, and you have Kyler Murray throw the ball. Like, that is that is the perfect goal of any organization. And then you have the running ability as something to keep defenses honest on third and 15, on longer plays, on plays that take longer to develop, like Patrick Mahomes utilizes the run, like Russell Wilson did. I want that more out of this offense than relying on Kyler Murray to do everything, which is what we've seen from time to time over the course of his tenure as quarterback for the last three years. But yeah, like I'm, I have no idea what this offense is going to look like for the Cardinals and, and, and the chiefs, is it just going to be, I, I I always, um, I always reference the movie rockstar with Mark Wahlberg, where it doesn't matter who the lead singer is. It's going to look the same. Like, are they going to miss Tyreek Hill? Are you going to get Tyreek Hill split in two and the best parts of Tyreek Hill with two separate receivers playing backup dancer to, to Travis Kelsey? We'll see. I mean, th- it's going to be growing pains for both in some capacity. It looks a little different on both sides of the ball for both teams. And this is going to be an incredibly sexy clash in week one. As we roll on here and cross over Thursday here, first one of the 2022 NFL season. For those that haven't been a part of the Locked On family, every Thursday, your favorite team and their opponent will be doing a crossover like this for a full podcast instead of a segment or two like we did last year to give you all the information, not only from your side of the game, but from the opponent's side of the game to kind of infuse together all the information possible in 25 minutes. That's what you get here at the Locked On Podcast Network, free and available on all platforms. Score predictions and just a little wrap-up, little summary next. Chris Clark, Locked On Chiefs, Alex Clancy, Locked On Cardinals. We roll on next. This has been fun. This is the first time Chris Clark and I have talked on camera. It is. It happens. We've got, like, not everybody plays every team every year. We're all in the DMs and the Twitter DMs, which we could sell for a lot of money with the content that's in there. I'll tell <laughs> yes, you what. It's not just built bar and, and things like that. Um, but this has been really fun. You know, the Chiefs are an interesting organization. The Cardinals, like, for a second, were compared to, well, what if they could become the next Chiefs? And nobody knew – I mean, nobody is, is an absolute that, I, that I'm going to take back. Um, going from Alex Smith to Patrick Mahomes looked to be a risk in some capacity, except for around the people who are close to the organization at Arrowhead, the people that cover the team. Like, that was a risk because you knew the floor was so high for Alex Smith. You knew exactly what you were going to get. He's a much better version of Andy Dalton. You knew exactly what you were going to get. And with Patrick Mahomes, the, well, the gunslinger, even though I hate that term, how has he just, evolved? Oh, yeah. And, I would just challenge you really team. quick. Yeah. I just want to challenge you really quick on one thing. Alex Smith evolved his last season in Kansas City. He become he became a more of a downfield guy than he had ever been in prior in his career. And I think that's because he got pushed. I think he saw what Patrick was doing and he got pushed. And that's great for Kansas City. That was great for the team. And it really showed Patrick what's a – pro quarterback can do attacking downfield. So I think that all benefited the the team. The one thing I will say, you know, Mahomes is still continuing to evolve. And the other thing that I'm really looking forward to this game, even though this is extremely petty, being voted the eighth best player in the NFL is going to be something that is going to terrify teams this season. Yeah, no, I agree. And and I'll tell you what, uh, just burying the lead for the rest of my life talking on Lockdown NFL Thursday, I do with Tyler Rowland. I'm picking the Chiefs to win the Super Bowl. Like, this is why people are anointing the Bills, why people are anointing anybody else in the AFC. Look at what happened. Well, I I don't remember the amount in seconds. What was it, 19, 20 seconds? 13. That's what I said. I said 13. That's where the 13 came from (laughs) earlier. Um, 13 seconds. That's all it took to rip the hearts out of an entire city. Broken tables and not. And that wasn't even a play. Like, the the mic'd up, 
And I'm just not slobbering over the Chiefs because this is fun. If you're a football fan, how do you not enjoy that moment? I mean, Travis Kelsey's like, I'm going to run this, just throw him in the ball. Cool. Kick it. Game. I mean, you know, whatever. It's a tie game, whatever. Like, that's what. But for him to have the. Do. For him to have the knowledge and the thought process to be able to figure out this is how we beat this team. This is how we do it. This like that's coming from a tight end. That's generally not somebody that is going to be giving you that kind of information. Kelsey is on a whole different level than what he started in the NFL. And I think Mahomes has brought a lot of that out in him. No, for sure. I mean, and, and they're all playing on well, Travis Kelsey's playing on house money. This like he he's yep. he's a Hall of Famer already. So like he has that car blanche to say, you know what? Andy, you and your mustache can hang on for a second. I got this. And and it's it's just really interesting to see. Um, and that's something that the Cardinals hope to strive for, where there are spots that the Cardinals have where it's like, this is going to be an evergreen superstar for this team. Kyler Murray, Buda Baker, DeAndre Hopkins, hopefully they can figure out a contract extension for him with the big money that he has coming up. Hopefully you're hoping Hollywood Brown could be like that. And you're hoping ab- against all hope, above all hope, that Isaiah Simmons and Zayvon Collins can become part of that. Because Andy uh, Travis Kelsey was, he wasn't a, a pup when Patrick Mahomes was drafted. You know, he had a couple years, and then now Patrick Mahomes sitting for a year, I still think that's the greatest thing that, ever, that could ever happen for a quarterback. Like, people are so rushing in, rushing in, rushing in for quarterbacks to start. But the Chiefs are a, a stencil for how to run an organization. Well, It's not perfect. But no, it's not. I would also say just really quick. The thing that I loved about Mahomes learning was how much did he learn from a guy like Alex Smith that you're never going to get even just starting like watching a pro QB that is playing at that high level. Because like I said, Mr. Smith was a pro bowl QB and he learned from him. He was able to Smith took him under his wing and taught him everything he knew. And I think that is why Patrick Mahomes is where he is. I think he's got one of the best work ethics in the NFL and Combine that with Smith's Smith's knowledge of how to play the position and what to do and how to prepare. That really put him light years ahead of other QBs coming into the league because a lot of them are still working on trying to figure out lineman protections and how that works. Right. And and no, and it's obviously an ideal situation. It's in a vacuum with Andy recoming and taking over the reins there. Now, but let me ask you, what fears you? What have you been talking about on Locked on Chiefs about the Cardinals that fears you? Is it only Kyler Murray? Is it Hollywood Brown? Is it this offense as a whole like – like, what, what are the sticking points for you that you're going to be very curious to see if the Chiefs can combat these strengths of the Cardinals on Sunday? I think the biggest worry in my mind, other than Kyler Murray, because that's probably the largest one, would be the wide receivers, because to me that's an unknown. I know I watched what Rondell Moore did last year. I watched what A.J. Green did last year. But how are they going to use them this year? How are they going to get the wide receivers involved? And they're going up against corners – you know, they're, the Chiefs are going to have two corners that are in the top four that are rookies. Mm-hmm. Trent McDuffie is a starter, and he's a rookie. Joshua Williams is probably going to be corner number four, and he's a rookie. So you get either of those guys on the field, you're going to have very young players at that position. Now, safety-wise, they've got guys that have played in the league in Justin Reed and, and Juan Thornhill, so they have depth back there. But it's, those, it's the corners going against all these wide receivers uh, and Hollywood Brown's an unknown in this offense. I mean, you know what he was in Baltimore. I don't think he's going to be what he still was in Baltimore. I think he's going to be more. But how quickly is he going to get on the same page in this offense and with the, and with Kyler Murray? It helps that they played in college together, but still have a question about that. Yeah, you know, and it's an interesting point because one of my point of contentions this offseason was I would have liked to see a series or two. I would have liked to see Kyler Murray throw Hollywood Brown the ball once. You know, and Patrick Mahomes – He's got new weapons he was playing. And I, I tweeted out and I got – there was some some vitriol back that if Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes are playing a snap, maybe Kyler Murray should be also. Maybe instead of calling plays, he should be playing. And I know the injury concerns. I know all that. I understand all of it. But seeing – getting reps with guys that weren't on the roster last year I think is important. And maybe they had well, enough in practice and, uh, you know, it, it is what it is. But there's going to be growing pains regardless. It's going to be – there's going to be potentially little ugly throws here and there, missed assignments, things like that, because they've never played together in, in, in full speed. But and, you know. and game speed's different than than practice. And the big thing, if if you go back and look at last year, Josh Allen didn't play in the preseason last year. They came out and they stunk against the Steelers in Week Two. Yeah, and I guarantee you, it has something to do with the fact that they didn't play in the preseason because game speed is different. They were just not ready for that defense. 
Yeah, no, agreed. Agreed. And I mean, the first two games for these teams, you said the Chiefs play the the Cardinals and then and then the the Chargers and the Cardinals go Chiefs, Ra- uh, Chiefs, Raiders, Rams. Like it ramps up very quickly. And um, yeah. and it'll be very interesting to see what happens. Let's go quick score prediction uh, uh, for you, Chris Clark of Locked On Chiefs. I'm gonna go 31-17 Kansas City, and I would feel a little bit better about going with maybe more points for Kansas City. But there's two things. One, I'm not sold completely on how well this offense is going to mesh the first week. I do think that uh, you know by week three or about by four, we'll know exactly what this offense is going to be, which is a problem considering who they play. Uh, just a couple days after they play the Cardinals. But then you're also in a situation where I'm not exactly sure what this Arizona offense is going to look like and how many points they're going to put up. And Kansas City's defense I played really well in the preseason, so I think that they should be in a good situation. But the other part of them not scoring a lot of points is going to be that Andy Reid doesn't seem to like to run up the score on teams either. So to me, if they get up by two scores, I don't think he's going to be pushing it. You know, I've gone back and forth on this a lot. I've done the win-loss predictions. I've had them winning seven games. I've had them winning 11. And I think that just like what happened last year, there are very there are things that Cliff Kingsbury um, makes me pull my hair out that he does. And there's some things that he does, and he's never lost a regular season opener. And I think that history is going to continue. It's a weird one. They put up a 40-burger against Tennessee last year, the Cardinals did, and then Tennessee ended up being the one seed in the AFC. I think that... Because the Cardinals are at home and because Kyler Murray has had an offseason where it's like, I need to go prove, just like Patrick Mahomes, who was eighth, it's different. It's first world problems compared to somebody who hasn't gotten to where Patrick Mahomes has yet. I think the Cardinals are going to get a W. I think there's going to be like 65 point score. I think it's going to be last possession, 34-31 Cardinals. Like, And the reason why is both defenses are pretty unproven. You've got your Chris Jones, Okay. You've got your guy, you've got your safeties. And the Cardinals kind of the same thing where there's a lot of question marks with a lot of young guys. And I just think that the Cardinals are going to come out and like the like it, they're going to be the talk of the NFL to begin this season like they were last season. And then we'll see what happens down the stretch. So I think 34-31 Cardinals. I thought ba- I thought back and forth. So initial I was like lose, loss, loss, Chiefs. But I think it's going to take a little while longer for MVS and Juju to get into it. I think Travis Kelsey is going to have a day. Patrick Mahomes is going to be Patrick Mahomes. But the running back room, Clyde Rizzo hasn't reached the potential that everybody thought he could. It was, it was a, it was a, I don't know. It was a luxury pick in the end of the first round where they could have gone somewhere else. It was the Sony Michelle was. of the Patriots taking, you know, and Patrick Mahomes got his guy and it hasn't necessarily panned out, even though they've got other guys. And I could look like a total nincompoop. But I do think that the Cardinals are going to get a W week one at home because of it being week one, because of there being so much uncertainty. One to ten, how crazy do you think I am? Or the validity of, dude, it's week one, anything can happen. I'd say probably, in my opinion, probably an eight. The, you're crazy. Lower than but, normal, baby. I'll take it. Yeah, I just, I, I think that it's, I get why you're saying what you're saying, and I understand it. It makes sense to me. I just don't know that I can really go that far as to say that Kansas City is going to lose week one especially knowing that they have to win week two or they, it, it, mm. you know, if they're in a situation where they lose week one and something happens and they lose week one, week two becomes a must win. And that makes it that much more pressure, that much harder. And I just don't think that that's going to happen. I think that Kansas City finds a way to win this one. And I don't know that it'll be close. Um, I'm really impressed with the defense that they have now and the players that they brought in. So I think that people are going to be surprised with their defense this year. I'm just going to tell you one thing before we get out of here on the first edition of Crossover Thursday for the 2022 season. If the Cardinals only put up 17 points in week one, there is going to be much bigger issues for the Cardinals for the rest of the year because of how much impact they've put onto the onto the offense this offseason. And let's just hope that um, – Let's hope that isn't the case for the Cardinals for the future, not only for this game. Chris Clark at Chris Clark NFL. Ryan Tracy, you can see here both of them. Locked on Chiefs, free and available wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube. Alex Clancy, Locked on Cardinals. You can hear me Monday through Friday as well. YouTube, thanks for hanging. This has been fun. Um, For Chris, I'm Alex, and you will hear us both on our respective podcast tomorrow.